Hey, everybody, welcome back to the Spin Rack. I'm here with my boy PD. PD, say what's up. What's going on? Hey, today we're talking about that hot trailer that just dropped for the boys. Okay, what is the season? You know the season, PD? Four. Season four. So let's see what's the latest thing. We um, totally yeah. dropped out. So we're back. We are back, the boys. I look back at my life, and all I see are the messes I made. And I ain't got time to fix it. I can do one thing right, but the time I got left, I can't do it alone. I can't do it without you. This country is corrupt beyond repair. So we gotta save it. It's not gonna be easy. We'll have to do some terrible things for the greater good. You'll no longer be beloved celebrities. You will be wrathful gods. Show me a little wrath. That doesn't sound good, Ashley. Oh, yeah, no shit, Ashley. Sorry, Ashley. The whole world is about to burn. We need someone like you, Billy, before the soup start rounding us up and dumping us off in camps. Hey, the comedian. I have found the answer to all our prayers. The oh. virus that kills soups. Oh, this is insanely yeah, desperate, this. even for you. Well, insanely desperate's where we are, don't you think? Thank you. I'm moving now. Chop, chop, motherfuckers. This is a biblical war. Good versus evil. I'm declaring hunting season on star ladders. I can't believe this is fucking happening to me again. <laughs> Look, we've all done bad shit. What's insane is that our solution to every yeah. problem is murder. I'm not doing this. Violence isn't great. Violence is power. That's a spirit jam. Who wants a creamy, delicious milkshake? If we're ever going to win against monsters, we need to start acting human. Fucking welcome. Hey, that's the it looks like. I'm like, yo, the kill, the blood. Yes. Yes. Oh, the, 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 the violence is, 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 um, is um, comedy. It's comedy violence. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I left before this. I'm definitely out. I'm out. Sorry, y'all. I can't do it. I know why I left, and now I'm staying out. Well, I mean, I've been I've been dipping in and out of it um, for a while, and but you didn't like horror. No, well, this is horror, but I mean, saying the, the story off and on. So I've been following what's going on, and you know, I I'm surprised it's been as successful. But I think, like Cal, um, Cal said, well, there's such an anti superhero feeling. You know, it is. People like to see superheroes do dark things. I I generally don't, but. You know, I'm just surprised it has been going on as long. And uh, hey, I, I'll take a look at it again. You know, there's an audience for it. You know, I'm not. Uh, you know, I tend to be a little bit more positive in my views, but I'll take a look at it. Not a big deal. I'm not checking out. I'll definitely. Not. I'm checking out. Well, the other thing I wanted to mention, since we're on the the boys, right? Yes, Garth Ennis. So Garth Ennis is the co-creator behind, um, well, he's in the front, the image you see in the front, behind him is Mark Miller, right? So um, Garth Ennis is, has a dark view of heroes. He had um, Transmopolitan, he did um, obviously The Boys, he did Thor, um, uh, what's the name? Viking, a ton of these dark, dark, dark books. Now, what I brought this up to say, how must Mark Miller feel? Because he had Jupiter's Legacy that was on Netflix that tanked, but it had basically the superhero framework. And we have Garth Ennis, who has the boys, that's on his, um, 
It's a four from series. Now, Mark Miller has Kick-Ass, I think a new Kick-Ass coming out. He's had a, a bunch of movies, a bunch of successes. So I don't think one failure would be a big deal for him. But it's just interesting that they both were in the same kind of playing field. And it feels like the Ennis take on it was a little more what the audience wanted. What do you feel about that? His darkness? Yeah, his style, his brand, the cut of his jib, the cut of how he does something of saying, we have these um, grunge characters taking out superheroes. With Jupiter Legacy, we have these kind of um, Grant Morrison kind of cool um, legacy characters that take over from the from the um, the gods type of thing, where um, Ennis's take was the gods are assholes, so they deserve and they're terrible, they're horrible people. The I mean, gods, doesn't he make a point in his bio that he says that he didn't grow up knowing God? He wasn't trained. He wasn't. He didn't grow up, um, you know, in in Northern Ireland. It wasn't until he went to school that he started learning about that. What? God or comic books? No religion, he said. He said that when he was a six-year-old in school, right? Mm-hmm. Who, Miller or, yeah, or Garth Ennis? Garth Ennis, right? And okay. then he um, and Preacher, you know, comes out of that, doesn't it? I mean, so he has a, a deeply, I, would say, I wouldn't say flawed, but difficult view of what it is uh, on what's happening. I mean, his Maybe so. I, I forgot about Preacher. He like, can yeah. It's, it's a very dark view, and you know he's very cynical. I think that's that typical English cynicism that we see a lot in stories. Yeah, you need to be brought down to to a basic level. Um, you know, and so there's there's a there's definitely a, a, a what is that? I mean, I was first introduced to him the Punisher stuff, right? You know, which is gritty. Yeah, I was iffy on that. I was very iffy on those stories. Right, but I mean, but this is the stuff that he's done. He's worked on like Hitman. He's worked on uh, Bloody Mary. Um, you know, of course, we, because of the success of the series, you know, from Hellblazer. I mean, look, those are the type of things that he worked on. So that kind of oh. like, you know, so some of those type of things that you really the authority which they're pushing now like crazy. And I was not a big fan of the authority at all. I just find that his work has always been tinged with the darkness and, you know, what, what the powerful have and what the people who don't have power have to do to, to, to bring him down. And I guess that to me was always looking at the Punisher and how he is dealing with these very powerful individuals. And, that. and he seems to have continued that theme throughout a lot of his stuff. So you have uh, the boys with the Homelander and them and how they're dominating humanity. And he's like, well, you know, these superheroes suck, right? Yeah. And we kind of talked about that in another episode where we were saying that, you know, if there really were mutants, would we be saying, hey, kumbaya mutants, or would we be saying, yo, this is a scary business? If they're superpowered people, if they're people, the key word, if you're superpowered people, we know what people are. They become more like, I think to me, when I look at the superheroes, they remind me of Greek gods, particularly in the boys, in the, in the boys universe, because, you know, you have Odin, not Odin, you have, uh, well, Odin too, but you have Zeus who's sleeping around and he's fighting with his brother Hades and Neptune and he doesn't really care about the humans and the trials and tribulations that they're going through. So that's how come you have heroes like Hercules and others come about to remind the guys that there are other people here, you know? So I think that, and to me, that's what I've always seen Garth Ennis as, you know? He's, he's kind of pro-human, but with a, with a British sensibility. My problem with the boys has always been the issue of, um, what's the name of the leader of the boys' name? Billy, right? Billy Butcher, I think it is? Uh-huh. And he doesn't have powers, but he's always able to get things done. I mean, he probably yeah, just I don't man. buy into that at all. In a world as vicious as the world of the of the boys, it's like it just always shocks me. But you know, the one thing about Billy is that he's willing to go all the way. Mm -hmm. People are like, well, you know, that's a little bit too much. He's like, well, people gotta die, so be it. <laughs> you know, we gotta get these suckers out. You know, but then also it's a revenge fantasy, right? He's basically it's... doing because of what what happened to his family so and again perfect again going back to punisher the revenge fantasy well i would say that's the other part that i that kind of makes me dislike his work 
because there is a reverse power fantasy. It's like, I want to find the Achilles heel of this guy that's like, um, it's like taking the David versus Goliath and making um, David basically the kind of person who, you know, cuts your Achilles heel just because it's fun to do. Like that's, I'm small, but I'll cut his Achilles heel. When he falls around, I'll, you know, or I'll feed him, I'll, uh, I'll feed him a, a snow clone with, with glass in it. Like that's kind of the Ennis type of character take on stuff, which is kind of really dark. I was, I, my reference to Jupiter's Legacy to what's the name, but you mentioned in Preacher, Preacher didn't have a long run on TV. So they have their hits and their misses. You know, it's always good that they, uh, Comic Guy does get something. So I was thinking about it, but they both have their successes and their hits and um, it's something that they can retire on, which is always good. So, but um, he's not like the Punisher. I think I argued with a friend of mine. I'm pretty sure he, I know he doesn't watch the show at all, but um, he was I like, he was like, um, he was like, hey, you know, did you read the, you know, that um, issue with the, with Daredevil? Where Daredevil he forced Daredevil to use a gun, and then Daredevil shot, but it didn't have any bullets, and he couldn't stop him. Then Daredevil felt all weird. I was like, I was like, Frank Miller already did that. And he's like, he did. He said, what happened? He said, well, Punisher put him in a place where Daredevil had a gun, and he had to stop the Punisher. And he said, what did he do? I was like, Daredevil shot him. Like, what do you expect the hero to do? Like, if he it comes down to it, he's going to have to use it against the Punisher. He's not going to be like, I don't have a killing code. He's going to be like, well, I have to do this. You know, so, um, uh, what is it? You know, I think he did it for last. Like, Spider-Man gets, the only time I've seen Spider-Man get beat up by, is a, a Russian person with, um, with, with big breasts and beats the hell out of Spider-Man. So then Punisher comes and take Spider-Man as a blockade to take his hit. So Spider-Man's getting punched in the face while, while, while um, Punisher is doing his hits around him. And then after the Punisher wins, he said, what happened? He said, oh, and, and the Punisher said, oh, you were great. You were great. You were great, that sort of thing. It's like just trashing the heroes. And Viking was even worse than that. He said, oh, well, Thor's a Viking. He's like, the Vikings don't have any more power than, like, Thor is their god. So you can't look at the Vikings and be like, oh, this Viking could, like, break Thor's jaw or something like that. It's like, Thor is a god, and that's the thing. So it doesn't relate trying to have, you know, him and that. But uh, ultimately, he's got a series that's running. I didn't expect it to go this long, but it's going this long. So what can you do? Oh, you're talking about Thor. Okay, yeah. I, I thought you were talking about Vikings or something. I never, read the Vikings, so I, have, I, I never read, you said it's called Vikings, I never read Vikings at all, so I have no idea. Yeah. And I can't really say either of them or anything like that. But I mean, you know, I, I'm I'm all for, you know, look, great expressions of, of, of shows, of, of art is great, you know. I mean, I may not always be a fan of many of these different, but it's good to have a, a different choices out there because there's always markets. And the very fact that the boys became a hit is because, you know, the, it's, it's the anti-Marvel, right? And as we grow older, we see that, you know, people want more nuanced characters and more nuanced um, views of what superheroes would or would not do. Now, that, does that work for a younger viewer? Does that work for the general populace? No. I mean, let's get, let's get serious. You know, Amazon Prime, how many people are actually watching that versus, a, 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 let's say, Daredevil when it was on Netflix, right? I mean, compare the base. I guarantee the Netflix is much larger, right? And so, but... You know, for Amazon, it's a huge hit, and, and, and I guess it's probably a hit that's been going on. And they've done everything right. They've given people exactly what they read in the comics. Well, not exactly. They gave them a lot of what they read in the comics. They continue to build upon that. That's what, mm -hmm. that's what makes it success. You know? Build on what people like. You don't say, hey, well, hey, this worked. Let me try something else. No, you say, this worked. Build upon it. Keep build going. Upon it. Build upon it. So says the Sons of Anarchy. Wow, this guy. He's really pushing it today. So hey, if um anything else, be that's about it. I think we kind of covered. Okay, so then hey, so um if you like what you hear, please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, 
And if you want us to do more boys, then regretfully we might have to watch it. So it depends on what you guys do. <laughs> Spirak. Out.